This is the Final Fantasy Football Presentation, brought to you by Mauricio, Barbara, Alejandra, Grady, and Noah. Fantasy football management takes place at Red Top Mountain State, a university that has been dominating college football since Coach Thomas was signed 10 years ago. Now the team has just lost its star player. The coaches must now wrangle in their new star player and integrate him into the team, while also combating attempts by academic advising to suspend some of their players. While this is going on, the coaches struggle to compromise with one another and keep their lines in order during practice, games, and locker room prep talks. After these hurdles are crossed, however, more come up when the old star player wants to rejoin the team, much to the chagrin of the new one. Introduction to Characters Coach Thomas is the head of the football division for Red Top Mountain State. Coach Dale is the offensive coach. Coach Brian is the defensive coach. Matt is the team captain. Peter has been the star wide receiver. Adam is the new star wide receiver. And Alicia is the academic advisor for the school. Each of these characters have different views and methods when it comes to management. Now we will go over several episodes to show how we integrated managerial concepts into our story. We will first discuss how we use concepts from chapter 12 in our first episode, Peter's Problem. Thomas and the other coaches discussed Peter's behavior these past few weeks. He usually showed up late to practice, if at all, and never played well. This step in the decision making process would be identifying a problem. One of the coaches pointed this out and Thomas replies that in this case it is certainly not an opportunity. Thomas uses the bounded rationality model. He identifies a possible solution, which is motivating Peter with a speech, as, in, as his intuition prompts him to. He goes out onto the field and tries to motivate Peter with vigor. Peter nods and agrees with what the coach says, but his behavior does not change. After implementing this decision and having it not satisfice, Thomas decides to start formulating alternatives beforehand and choosing the best possible one. Since this has gone on for several weeks and Thomas wants a solution that will have the highest chance of success, he chooses to try the rational model for decision making. He begins brainstorming ideas. He is in a study, sees an ad for advice on how to deal with these types of situation, and considers using the Delphi technique. He, however, believes that experts in that sort of field are hacks and is not interested in what they have to say. Thomas comes up with a few options. He could have Peter committed to rehab, have a heart-to-heart -heart with him, make the team do drug tests, or cut Peter from the team. Thomas sees that all his decisions are basically programmed decisions. They are routine for this kind of behavior, but he cannot think of anything else. He could bring Brian into the process, but he knows that though Brian can come up with non-programmed decisions, he experiences escalating commitment, which would be bad if his decision turns out not to work well. In each of the decisions he comes up with, Thomas tries to think of the worst outcome, and by doing this, he is his own devil's advocate. Thomas does not want Peter sent to rehab because that would cause unnecessary media attention. He could do drug tests, but then all the other players who did drugs and still performed would be punished for Peter's mistake. Thomas already tried a speech with Peter, and though he could possibly reach him with a more heart-to-heart, -heart, he does not want to exert that effort or show that level of vulnerability. Thomas decides that cutting Peter is the option that will benefit the team the most, as they will no longer be dragged down by his inferior performance, and Peter will have time to reflect on his decisions. Coach Thomas implements this decision by approaching Peter after the next practice and telling him that he's off the team. After he makes his decision, his other coaches admit the solution was heuristic, as it solved the problem but was not the most optimal decision. Thomas argues his decision this time was not the result of satisficing. Although he made previous decisions to that end, he evaluated the decision more. They said that they should have had a standard operating procedure from now on that involves all the coaches, and Thomas reluctantly agrees, while still objecting that he was right. The other coaches suggest using the nominal group technique where the group goes through the rational decision process together with multiple advocacy, meaning that more than one of them can play devil's advocate for each alternative. The last step in the decision-making process is monitoring the results, which is what Thomas will be doing for the remainder of the season. 
We will now analyze how we use concepts of management in episode 5, Grades, based on chapter 12, Managerial Ethics. The coaches meet with academic advisor Alicia to discuss one of the players' final failing grades in this episode. Alicia says she will have to pull Matt from the team if he fails another class this semester. Thomas suggests a utilitarian approach to this decision, for the greater good of Matt, the university, and another student. They should give another student a scholarship for doing all of Matt's work for him. Alicia is offended by this and asks what would happen if everyone did this, which is the universal approach. Thomas argues that theoretically isn't possible when it comes to reality. This isn't an ethical dilemma, argues Alicia. Thomas's suggestion clearly violates the school's code of conduct. But the probability of effect is low, Thomas says. People have been doing this for decades and never face consequences. Alicia says she will personally be a whistleblower if he decides to do this. Thomas says there is no compensatory justice for the players. They deserve much more than they get, and he isn't allowed to pay them. It would fall under distributed justice to help them with their classes in this way. Alicia accuses Thomas of having an ethical lapse in judgment. If you go through with this... The board will use the justice approach, and you will be fired immediately, she says. The temporal immediacy is great. I am an agent of the university, says Thomas. According to the efficiency's perspective, I should be working to maximize their profits. And to do that, I need my team captain. Then you need to get him to raise his grades without cheating, Alicia replies. My proximity to this issue is very close, because I was raised with academics as my number one priority. I don't expect your morally, moral intensity on this issue to be the same, but after hearing the magnitude of the consequences, which I will make sure get followed through on, you will agree with our society's social consensus that cheating is wrong. Thomas excuses himself and talks with the other coaches. They tell him he should adopt a more strategic corporate social responsibility perspective and take note that Alicia is now a stakeholder in this situation, as well as all the students who do well in the university on their own. He says they should go past Alicia and try to get the teachers to cook the books to raise Matt's grades. Brian warns that this will lead to externalities and that the coach should just take a moral rights approach and get Matt's grades up the right way. Thomas finally agrees to adopt these managerial ethics, and he goes back to Alicia and agrees to help get Matt's grades back on track. General Conclusions on Management Our group has learned that we need to communicate clearly to be effective, and make sure that each individual is working on what they should be. We also learned that management is definitely not a science, because people and their responses to different stimuli change day by day, and you can't really predict how your management skills will fare, even if you know all the right way to do things. As a group, we were completely engaged in the creative aspects of this course. Dr. Diazio took an innovative approach to a traditional management course. In addition to learning new lessons and terminology about management from Dr. Diazio, he illustrated these concepts in a realistic method by not only creating a storyline that emphasizes his teaching, but also demonstrating how important teamwork is in the real world and how to do it effectively. Also, Jessica Weekly's feedback was helpful during the process and we incorporated it into our assignments throughout the project. Participating in a group project wasn't without its complications, but our group worked hard for our final presentation. We were able to come together to develop an idea for our TV show, watch it come to life, and take lessons from the course of how to productively cooperate in a team setting. We have also learned a very important real life lesson when we tried to give one of our members a chance to improve and did not make him accountable for his actions. We learned that if a similar situation occurs in the future, we will reach out to our professional manager or leader, knowing that a good leader will be willing to help and provide great advice. Normally when studying management, a person thinks of the corporate world. Our TV show relates a less common management topic, football. Many management topics relate rather closely to the sports world, and discovering such connections prove rather interesting. Our head coach, Thomas, serves as a primary manager while Peter represents an employee. I believe the key to a successful manager is clear communication, a quality that Coach Thomas and his staff perform well. Throughout the duration of our show, we will see how the coaching staff handles various situations and what management concepts they utilize to build a successful team. 
The management course definitely helps me with understanding the reasoning behind management's decisions and implementing the lessons into finger puppet management project. Also, the unusual idea of learning through the teamwork makes the course more enjoyable than traditional lectures. The fantasy football team project have taught me that management does not mean leading only mid-sized and large companies, but it can be applied to any business or even a one-person entrepreneurship. It is fascinating that management is helpful in every aspect of our lives, professional as well as private. I have also realized that group faces many challenges I have never considered before, such as groupthink. We share the responsibilities based on who is comfortable and confident in particular part of the assignment, which works perfectly as we do not overlap each other, but rather complement one another with our various skills. I do appreciate the fact that we are a diverse group because we are sharing different perspectives about the project's topics. When our television show idea was originally brought up, I honestly had some doubts on how we would be able to relate it on the lessons of the course. Fortunately, I was very wrong. The story we have created not only relates immensely to the weekly lessons, but also gives a very personable touch to management. Coach Thomas has to make a lot of tough management decisions, but also shows that managing isn't so black and white. It has a lot of emotion behind it. Working with my group on this TV show has been great. With all our work schedules being so difficult, we all put in effort to get the best work done. I'm very thankful to have the group we have and to see our idea flourish and actually help us bring the management lessons to life. I think this class was a great learning opportunity. I say this because I learned how to effectively work together as a team. We learned how to set our objectives and how to work towards completing them. I'd obviously been in group settings before in other classes, but I think that this was the first time it was actually real. And I say that because we had real issues that would come up and we would have to find real solutions for them by ourselves. We had to divide group work, group work by ourselves and nobody was there to do that for us. Sure, we had the professor, Professor Diazio there in case we had an issue, but for the most part, everything has was done by ourselves. We did have one issue halfway through the semester, which gave us a little bit of trouble, but even that I can say was a learning experience that I can take from. And I'll remember that for any future group work. My top takeaways are to communicate at all times and to make sure that nothing or no one is left in the dark. I would also say to set clear, set clear deadlines so you know how much time you have left on your hands and how to use your time most effectively. And last, I would say don't criticize anybody for their work and just stay positive and the team will do great things. I have learned a lot from this course, certainly more than if it had cert simply been three exams, like a majority of other management courses. I also learned how to manage my time much more efficiently, as I had to teach a church group, work 40 hours a week, babysit two kids with special needs, and my parents' dog, as well as take three other time-intensive online courses while contributing to this group's progress. It does take a lot of multitasking to be able to coordinate what parts of the project that people are working on and figuring out how much each of us has to contribute every day so that we can finish before the deadline, all while living our normal lives in between our group chats and work. Recommendations. As a team, we have created a few tips to live by in order to be as efficient of a team as possible. Start working early in the week. Learn how to operate new technology and utilize it to your advantage. Don't procrastinate. Work together, not against one another. Don't plagiarize. Do your own thing. Each member has a responsibility to pick the role they are best at. Contribute fairly and work just as much as everyone else does. Thank you for watching this final fantasy football final presentation.